Kiriko is the most insane, the most cracked support in Overwatch. She's got the highest skill ceiling. She can kill everybody. Her healing is crazy. She's just insane. This, and she can teleport. Did I say she can teleport? Okay, before I lose my mind, let's go and take a look at her key statistics. Okay, firstly, healing a Fuda. This is 13 health per shot, which is two of the tickets, or 130 for the entire clip, which is all 10. Now, the way this works is if you fire, you will just use all 10. However, you tap fire, you'll only fire two out. You can see by the UI in the middle of the screen. This locks onto people that require healing as well. So you basically launch it into the team fight and hope that it heals people. But it is slow moving. Let's talk about Kunai. This does 40 damage to the body but it's 120 to the crit box. So on Tracer, if you headshot her, 120 damage, you then just body shot her and she's dead. This means that Kiriko is vicious. Her damage output is mental. Also, she can teleport 30 meters. That's right, 30 meters to any friendly target and only to friendly targets. And she appears about two meters away from them. Pretty ridiculous. Oh, this is Protection Suzu. So this has got a 50 heal over time, which takes one second to do the 50 healing. It's one second Im immunity and gives you two to three meters of knockback on enemy targets. It is crazy. You can get environmental kills with it. This is Kitsune Rush. So this is 25 meters long, seven meters wide, 25% attack speed, 50% movement speed, 60% cooldown reduction. As you can see here from the clip, the, the effect kind of persists if you dip in and out of the ultimate. Okay, let's take a look at some gameplay and take a look at some examples here. So, firstly, we need to talk about Kiriko's movement. It is it is beyond crazy. I mean, look at that. Straight to Hanzo, drop a heal on him. Now, this is the way Kiriko plays. She needs to be quite close to her targets to heal them. This isn't like Anna, where you can just hit, scan, heal people at range. No, you need to be in there, in the fight, providing the healing. And you will notice Kiriko is very close to her tank here, making sure she can heal her. Now, this is a major weakness for Kiriko because, well, you're always kind of with your team, yeah? You're not sitting in the back line, but you do have your teleport and you can get out of bad situations. You can also just delete Cassidy as well. So take a look at this here, right? It's going bad. The push isn't working out. The Orisa is pretty low. Kiriko should probably heal a bit more. Orisa goes into some crazed helicopter and <laughs> flies away. Kiriko teleports to the Hanzo, which isn't the best move, but it doesn't matter because the teleport has got a seven second cooldown and she can just wait for Swift Step. It's not looking great. Keep herself safe. Get straight back out onto the Zen. She has got the best disengage of any support in the game. It is crazily powerful. Not only that, she can wall climb because her mother trained the Shamadas and, of course, trained Kiriko. So, of course, she can wall climb. So, you can't kill her. You can try and boop a Lucio, but you cannot kill her. So, unlucky there, Lucio, my man. But nice try. <laughs> she is so mobile. It makes her so survivable. But you always have to be aware as to what is going on all over the place. Like, look at this. Doomfist goes in. Didn't really need the protection Suzu there, but Doomfist was in. Kiriko can join in, teleport through the wall. Here's a better example. Kiriko has just died. There's a load of critical signs over there. Well, there was two, now there's one. She needs to get there, straight onto the soldier, throws a few healing charms into the Doomfist. Now, I think Doomfist might have survived there, but Kiriko's already in the fight. This is incredibly powerful. The fact that you can get back so fast is so powerful. Now, protection of Fuda, this is the immunity. Now, you, you're not going to be using this for the 50 heal. You're going to be using it to keep people alive. If somebody's taking a bunch of damage, like the Doomfist was then, you can throw it down and prevent them from dying. And this makes you immune to everything. You will not die if Protection Suzu is on you, but it only lasts a second. So this means Kiriko has to be very aware of when to use this. And it's got a pretty long cooldown, so she can't just throw this out willy-nilly. She needs to save it to counter ultimates, save it to counter other abilities, or save it to dig people out of holes because they're about to die. Namely, your Doomfist, if you've got a Doomfist tank. Now, let's talk about her weaknesses, because it isn't all shiny, gleaming, she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. She has to be with her team to be effective. Her healing is very slow. You will see... The movement speed of the charms in this video, they're not great. Again, nice use of the teleport there to get forward to the front of the fight and start supporting the Doomfist. But the movement is slow of the healing. You can burst heal, but you need to be pretty much on top of your target to do this. If you're keeping a decent distance, it becomes very difficult to provide that fast healing that other supports can provide. Supports like Anna can really fire burst healing into a target. Kiriko is nowhere on the same planet in terms of burst healing when you compare to Anna. But what she makes up with that is high mobility. Anna has no mobility. She can get dove upon. Kiriko's also got an immunity. Kiriko has one of the best support ultimates in the game. Might even be the best support ultimate in the game, although that's debatable early days for Kiriko. But the ultimate is so powerful, it lets you engage. It gives you movement speed. It gives you attack speed. It gives you cooldown reduction. It turns you into a monster. 
And this is super effective on certain heroes that use their abilities a lot. The fact that you can simply reduce the cooldown of your abilities is so, so powerful. And as we see again there, teleporting back into the fight. This was the same clip I used earlier, but you can see it. Teleporting back into the fight, it's so powerful. You're straight back with your team. You can keep that momentum going. So I honestly believe she is a meta support. Now, the question becomes, is she going to be effective across all ranks of Overwatch 2 or Overwatch, I guess. I'm just going to call it from now on because it's just Overwatch, isn't it? Whatever. I'm not too sure, right? Because yes, she does massive amounts of damage if you land headshots. If you don't, you're basically tickling targets down and you're not going to just delete people from the game. If you mistime your protection Suzu, you're going to throw fights because you could prevent damage and you've missed it. If you've got the wrong distance from the target that requires healing, you won't be able to heal them fast enough. So they're going to die. So there is loads and loads of times like there. I think she could have teleported away, possibly to the soldier, as soon as Reaper was on top of her. Didn't realise. Could have kept alive. Don't think it would have mattered. The fight's all over. The red team have become very aggressive and engaged. But it isn't cut and dry with Kiriko. It's not just pick her. This isn't like Brig, when Brig launched, where it was like, well, pick Brig, you won't die, and you'll do loads of healing. Kiriko is, yeah, you can play her if you're very aware of what's going on. You know, I think in a lot of ways, Mercy players will probably be quite good with Kiriko because Mercy players are very um, aware of what's going on on the map just because they have to be, because that's how Mercy plays. But then you've got the aim component, so it, it's not that cut and dry. Batiste players would be pretty good with Kiriko because they'll know when to use an ability that's going to prevent people from dying, right? Although Lamp is a better ability, I would imagine, than... Well, I don't know whether I can say that. Can I say it's a better ability? I don't know. Maybe Protection Suzu's better because it's, it's almost instant. But then Lamp's almost instant, isn't it, when you throw it down? I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one. But you can destroy Lamp. You can't destroy... Well, no, I don't know, actually, because Lamp, you can be your health can be reduced. And Protection Suzu just means you just don't take the damage. But it's only for one second, whereas Lamp lasts longer. But you see what I mean, guys? It is complicated. It isn't just like Kiriko is the best support in the game picker. It's Kiriko has got the highest skill cap or ceiling of literally any support where she can she can win fights she can turn the game she can not die to flankers because she can just literally headshot them and kill them very reliably if you've got the aim and yeah you could say this about Annie you could say this about Batiste but Kiriko can get out of that situation she can then teleport to a tank if she needs to she's she is just an incredible character and I think it's actually really cool that she's the first character in Overwatch 2 because she's showing us a different way of heroes being developed at Blizzard because this is the first hero for 5v5. So what you've got is a hero that can look after itself, that can pop off, that has got incredible... Well, the, the skill ceiling is just incredible for this hero. You will see, like pretty much at the start of this video, highlights of Kiriko just either killing the whole enemy team Maybe doing some sort of clutch teleport into Protection Suzu into a bunch of healing. Clutch ultimate usage. You're just going to see like tons of examples. And I think that is probably the hallmark of good character design. She is really good. Like, I, honestly, guys, I cannot stress how good this character is. She, she's really great to play. She is also... She's just really good. I, like, I could just sit here and wax lyrical about how good I think Kiriko is. She's a great hero. And I think if the future of Overwatch 2 heroes is going to be similar to this, then we've got a pretty good future indeed. Because Kiriko is always doing something. Look at this here. Taking up a longer sort of position. Spamming a bit of damage. And look at the damage on Zen. Like, you could say also Zen players be good Kiriko players. Because they're used to doing damage. And Kiriko does crazy damage if she's landing headshots. So good. But you're all over the place with this character. You're on the front lines. Then you can teleport to the back lines. Maybe you look after other support. Maybe you do a bit of peel. You can do all kinds of stuff. She is really, really good. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of Kiriko. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. See you soon.